Hello there. I'm going to talk about some things that happened in my life many, many years ago. They were very significant then, but to tell you the truth, these days, I don't even think about them. They're not in my mind on a daily basis at all. However, when I am asked to do a video like this, talking about things that happened in my experience, then of course, they come back to mind. And I want to tell you what happened when I was uh, rather young in the ministry in Northern Ireland. Uh, we were living in Knockview Road, off the Doak Road in Newton Abbey. And uh, it was a remarkable experience. I was very young. Uh, Ruth Ann was just a baby. We just had one child. And Maureen and Ruth Ann would go to bed. And I would stay up half the night. And I remember that big living room. I'd walk up and down praying, seeking God, seeking God desperately. And I wouldn't go to bed to whatever, two, three, four, five o'clock in the morning. Nobody in the world knew what I was doing, other, of course, than Ruth, uh, I mean, than Maureen, my wife. But I was seeking God. And then, over a period of several weeks, maybe some months, God started to show me things. And I saw them very clearly. For instance, he showed me a sanctuary. And off it, uh, there was a kitchen. I could see that. And, and it, it was as if God was saying, I have this sanctuary for you. That would last several nights. And then the burden would lift. And then I might get a, a, a bit of a rest. And then another burden would come on me. I remember seeing, told it to friends, I remember seeing this beautiful dining room. And then rest. And then some days or weeks later, it would start again. Television. I could see television. And that seemed unusual for Northern Ireland. I could see in-house printing. I could see, I remember saying the very words, a Christian education building. So this went on until... I saw individual buildings and individual capacities on a campus. I told people about it. I sought the face of God and I asked him to help me to get the necessary land. And so, first of all, we bought 10 acres of land just outside Belfast in Glen Gormley. Most of you in Ireland or Northern Ireland would know that. We bought uh, these uh, uh, 10 or 11 acres 11 acres, and then uh, we, we bought another 11 acres right beside it, 11 point something. So we ended up with 23 acres. Perfect. We got moving and built the first building. It was packed to the door. We had absolutely wonderful meetings. Then, did the opposition ever come? The newspapers, the television, people, evil men. I don't even think about these anymore except on an occasion like this when I'm talking to you about it. But it comes back to me and it was very difficult. The battles were unbelievable. I'd read things in the newspaper about myself. I had never even been to that place. And just stories made up. The opposition mounted and mounted and mounted. And then one day, this is unreal, after all that, that probably took place over a few years. You know, by the time I had the vision, that lasted for many months, and then buy the first acres, then buy the second number of acres, then build the first building, then open it. That would be a number of years. And then one day I walked into that building. It was called Faith Cathedral, Phase One. I walked into it, and I could tell you the spot. I was walking up the left-hand aisle to get to the pulpit area. And as I was walking up there, just so distinctly, the whole thing, wow, lifted off me. After God given me the vision and given me the acres and given us the first building, by the way, we had the second one partially up. Now the whole thing's gone. The whole thing is gone. Why? And then God led us to America. I'd like to read a scripture which is rather remarkable. Please listen. It's Acts 13, 44. 
And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing you put it from you, and judge yourselves unworthy of, unworthy of the everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. That's exactly what happened to me. It lifted off me, and God turned me toward America. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And from America, we can reach the ends of the earth through television, etc., etc. I can honestly say that this sanctuary I'm presently sitting in was exactly the sanctuary the Lord showed me back there. I didn't even know there was a Tarpon Springs then. <clears throat> but God obviously was in it all. It was quite tremendous. And there's other scriptures I'd like to give you. Jesus said in Luke 10, But into whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you not, go your ways out into the streets of the same and say, even the very dust of your city which cleaveth to us, we do wipe off against you, notwithstanding be sure of this, that the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. But I say unto you, said Jesus, that it shall be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. I wonder what those men who fought us so hard what they will think in the judgment when they realize what could have been in Glen Gormley and they didn't get it. And today we have this Christian education building which houses the tabernacle. We have the most magnificent dining facility. We have in-house television, in-house production of printing and so forth and so on and so on. God's fulfilled the whole thing, but the surprise is it's not in Glen Gormley, it's in Florida. But they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came to Iconium. Matthew 13, 53. And it came to pass when Jesus finished these parables, he departed thence. And when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue, insomuch that they were astonished and said, Whence hath this man wisdom and these mighty works? Who is he, in other words? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary, and his brethren James, and Joseph, and Simon, and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence then hath this man these things? And they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Luke 4, 24. And he said, Verily I say unto you, No prophet is accepted in his own country. John 4, 44. For Jesus himself testified that a prophet has no honor in his own country. We reached multitudes in Ireland. Thousands got saved, no question about that. Some of them are missionaries and preachers all over the world to this day. But when God was going to do something mighty, there were people filled with envy who came against us in such a way that God lifted the thing off me. And like Paul said, now we turn to the Gentiles. The Gentiles were the Americans in this instance. And we have been here and rejoice in these lovely people and their love for God and their desire to get out the pure gospel. That's me reminiscing about days of yore, about what did happen all those years ago. And now I know I'm exactly in the center of God's will, fulfilling the vision given to me, what's that, over 40 years ago, over a period of months of the different buildings. And here we have them all coming to pass. 
So I encourage you, trust God. And if one door closes, another will open. For as you obey him, you will find he will guide you in the way everlasting and meet and supply all your need. See you next time.